Hello, I'm Mad Uncle Morgan, and today we get to pull something out of the great big pile of crap to unpack. Yes, that marvelous time where people send me things to unpack. Things like actual crap. <laughs> pictures of bacon. No one ever actually sends me the bacon. They just send me pictures of bacon. People are evil. They also send me, you know, strange books, curses, small explosive devices. At least I know that I have dedicated fans. And if you would like to send me some crap to unpack, remember, it's Tension Crap to Unpack, Mad Uncle Morgan, 2727 Cook Street, Denver, Colorado, 80205. And yes, I live in the United States, and that kind of makes me an uh, evil American. Which is why you sent me crap to unpack. <laughs> so, today's crap to unpack is in a box. Actually, all the crap to unpack comes in a box. Um, and this is from um, Lulu, which is a a small print on demand company. Um, it's not necessarily my favorite print on demand company, but it's the, a lot of people use it simply because of the fact that it's the only place we can actually have hardcovers printed out of. Um, and yes, I, I realize anything coming out of a print-on-demand place has to be crap. Hence, why this is in the crap to unpack pile. Um, this was more secure when I received it. I think a cat was trying to get in here. Because that was way too easy to open. And, and, and it was solid when I received it. Some cat must have been trying to get in. Um, so, yeah. Uh, see? There's a book. Ah, uh, maybe it's the secrets of the universe. Hey. Could happen. People could send me something actually important. So we would have plastic. And more cardboard. Yeah. Morgan. Ah. Morgan's not exactly the strongest person on the block. So, yes. I, I was sent a wonderful piece of cardboard. Thank you. No. What? No? Uh, it's not a piece of cardboard. This is not what I'm supposed to be excited about. Jeez, let's look at technical people. Ah, look. Bubble wrap that's not bubble wrap. How disappointing. Ah, look at this. Yes. We're going to call this the important book. Probably not. <laughs> This is the Summer Solstice Edition 2015 of the Hermetic Tablet Journal of Western Ritual Magic. So that is the journal of we're making stuff up as we go along. I know some of these people. Some of the stuff they say was made up last Thursday. Mm -hmm. It's actually a nice picture of a trail card. I don't like that artwork. It's not as good as mine, but, you know. Um, on the back it says, The proceeds of this book will go towards esoteric charities. Um, and if you don't like esoteric charities, you probably don't want to buy this book. Hey, 
who blames you? You know, um, because let's be honest, esoteric charities are evil. They are up to no good. Always. Absolutely. For sure. Don't say I didn't tell ya. So, this is actually from the second year of production of this journal. Um, oh, they actually have production editors. Who would have guessed? Um, well, I, I guess, you know, the editing's important, although this is esoteric. So, why is there ed any editing? There's never any editing. Don't trust this book. It's been edited. Ooh. Well, let's see who all has written stuff. Oh, look. It's a version of the Hermetic Tablet. The part, part of the of the emerald tablet. I always love the emerald tablet of Hermes. I I, I always sit there and kind of go. And uh, yes, I, I I hear what you're saying, but uh, can you translate it into a plain, simple cat so that I would understand it? So um. Oh, have a list of. Um, um, who contributed to this? Um, it's kind of a interesting list. Oh, the editorial is by Nick. Yes. Um, it's about Dr. Robert. Falcon. Fal 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 Falcon. And, okay, throughout this entire thing, I'm going to mispronounce everybody's name. So let's just get this over with. I apologize for mispronouncing your name. Take comfort in the fact that I'll never be able to curse you because I can't pronounce your name right. Mm. Let's see, um. Oh, look, it says that Nick lives in Rome. Um, by the way, the other day, somebody a, basically was shocked to find out that Nick lived in Rome because he's never mentioned it on his blog. Yes, he has never mentioned it on his blog. Nick has never admitted to living in Rome. Yeah. Um. Ah, then we have an article, Other Magicians and the Goetta by Jake Sat Stratton Kent. Yes, I know, I mispronounce everything that comes out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. And... Also, the grimoires, most of which are later than the medieval period, reflect magic during its decline rather than its heyday. Wow. As a comparison, historians point out that astrologers writing in the 1700s were aware their art was becoming sidelined by new tendencies in Western culture. Oh, and, and the whole point of that, that was, uh, uh, that was the second paragraph. Uh, the first one was about the fact that uh, grimoires don't actually uh, tell the whole story. Um, yeah, it's a couple of pages. Um, then we have... 
uh, article, the beginnings of, uh, the word is spelled A-M-O-O-K-O-S. So that, Amukush? No? Oh. You sure? Looks like a mucus. So it's basically an order that ran by cows. Hey, it's a theory. Can you prove it wrong? Can you provide absolute technical proof? You know, holds up in court, court, no matter who the judge is and how drunk they are. Can you prove that this order is not ran by cows? And don't believe anything that Mike Miggy actually says saying that it does not involve cows. Don't believe these people. In fact, everybody who writes in this book presume that they are not telling you the truth. They're probably all part of the Illuminati. Be very scared. Oh, she got, uh, got a loving article that ha has a bad photo stat of a handwritten document. Um, always gotta love those. Because you know that if they didn't take time to type it out, out that it's automatically false. Nothing handwritten is actually true. It's just the first draft. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have... Yeah, here's a good one. You know, this one's a complete lie. You, you should not read this article under any condition. Consecration of the Venus Talisman by Chick and Tabitha Cicero. No, don't read, don't, don't, don't buy this book. Don't read this. Save yourselves. Oh, it's a ritual for the uh, Zeltor Adept Miner. Or Zim. Oh, it has barbaric words. <laughs> Otherwise known as Nokian. Mm -hmm. Which I per speak perfectly fine. Provided that I've been hit on the head with an anvil um, on a full moon on Friday the 13th. Mm. It involves a lotus wand. Yeah, on a lotus wand. Mm. My lotus wand looks like it has exploded. Ooh. Look. Broad print. Oh. Huh. Better double check these. Can't be right. Oh. Nobody ever gets the Rose Cross sigils right. Remember that. Double check everything. Ah. Oh. Ah, well, this goes on for several pages. Oh. Yes, it was on for several pages. Oh, here, here, here's somebody else you don't want to listen to, ever. Um, Aaron Lee, don't want to listen to him, ever, okay? He does not know what he's talking about. Yeah. Um, restoring the Enochian Heptra... That, 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 that. Can I just say hierarchy here, rather than trying to say this word? And, you know, he writes a lot about Nokia. And that right there, the fact that he writes so much about Nokia is solid proof that he knows nothing about it. So do not buy this book. 
Do not read this article. Because you know it has to be wrong. Oh, here, 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 here shows you how much you should not listen to him, okay? Uh, he's talking about how... Well, let me just read the, the, the paragraph, okay? Certainly seems odd that Mars, the planet of warfare, should concern itself with water and the sea. Unless you consider that Mars is the ruling planet of Scorpio, the fixed sign of water. Therefore, ba the battles mentioned in the chart are specifically naval battles. Now, okay, I'm sorry. He used logic here. He used the proper use of correspondences here. Do not read this article because it will mislead you. Remember, cultism is all about intent and whatever stuff you pull out of your ass. Do not listen to anybody who writes in this book. Mm -hmm. And then we have an article by Nick, who, you know, as I've not tried to say his last name, uh, Farrell, Farrell, okay, um, Return of the Fates. Um, I didn't know they were missing. Sounds like, sounds like an, uh, uh, a movie. Return of the Fates. So... Oh. Oh, okay, right here, there's a lie. Fate is not a fadistic, okay? Uh, that's a lie, okay? So you know the whole article is a lie. Don't read anybody who actually is in this book. Mm -hmm. This goes on for several pages. What's up with this? Don't these people know that if you can't Twitterize your 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 wisdom, that nobody will read it. So, okay, then we come to consecration of a Kabbalist talisman for growth, prosperity, and advancement in the great work, an outer order ceremony. Well, right there, you know it's a problem because it's outer order. Nobody in outer order should do magic. Uh, I've been told uh, by somebody uh, in an alley who is drinking out of a brown paper bag. Uh, ants by... Well, I'm going to mispronounce that. I'm going to say, hey, Jane Gibson. <laughs> It actually involves more than one officer. So, you know you're not going to be able to do this because does, if you're lucky enough to have anybody uh, in the room when you're doing stuff, you're, you're doing better than most of us. Uh, I've had to, to actually, you know, anoint teddy bears and place them in places because I don't have enough warm bodies. By the way, let me tell you a little secret about Golden Dawn. Golden Dawn consists of random people who claim to belong to lodges, but they don't actually exist. Uh, the lodges, the people might exist, although they might might not actually exist. They might might just be be uh, a spam bot, you know. It, 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 actually, that would make a lot of sense. If everybody in Golden Dawn was a spam bot, that would make sense, okay? <laughs> Um, you know this ritual, well, it can't work because it has the, the 180 degree purification consecration by water and fire. Everybody knows that's not real. Well, they do. <laughs> Don't give me that luck. <laughs> Your authority, you can make a video. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> we can send you, we can send you boxes of crap to unpack. Oh. Um. Now, here's the article. The only article you need to read in here. Uh, the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram and the Great Work by Carmen Lugrick. Mm -hmm. um, because, let's be honest, only the LaBurp, which is the proper way to say that, <laughs> counts in Golden Dawn. It's the only magic that's ever done. And it's done badly. I know this for a fact. Mm -hmm. Because I've been told the people just fall on the floor twitching after they do it. Like they have leprosy. Or no, that palsy. Yeah, palsy. It's like they have palsy, not leprosy. Uh, although there might be a few zombies in Golden Dawn. What? How you know there's not zombies in Golden Knot? Be, be honest. How do you know? Can you prove there's no zombies in Golden Knot? The answer is no. Then there has to be zombies in Golden Knot. Would I lie to you? Of course I would. Oh. I can look at you and tell you with a straight face. Dogs are the real secret chiefs. Yes, dogs. Explains a lot about Golden Dawn if dogs are in charge, right? Because your average Golden Dawn lecture kind of sounds like. Obey me. See? Proof! Dogs are in charge of Golden Dawn. Because that made as much sense as any lecture you have ever heard. Let's see, what else do we have in here? Um, Doc, what is this? This article goes on for several pages. You're not going to get readers if you don't Twitterfy it. You have to put it in less than 140 characters. Jeez. Just horrible that people don't know your own market. Ugh. And, and we know this doesn't exist because not in Regardi, okay? Healing has nothing to do with Golden Dawn because it's not in Regardi, okay? A Golden Dawn healing ritual, the Rosencrucian art of healing. Uh, by Samuel Scar... Scar Broad. Hey! I never said that I could speak properly, okay? Um... I mean, the only word I need... The only thing I need to be able to speak clearly is the following sentence. Bacon? Why, yes! I will eat the bacon! Thank you! Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, um... And we have a, a, an article on healing. And it takes place in the Neophyte Hall. Um, wow, well, it, it, it's, it's a one-person ritual. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. And we have another article. Compassionate Goddess of the Highest Mind by a Tony to a Tony uh, to Tony Totatella, who has a PhD. You know what what what, what a PhD means? Means that uh, 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 the 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 bullshit has been piled higher and higher and higher. So you can safely ignore this article, okay? Because there can't be any truth in this article, okay? None at all. 
Because the person has a PhD. And you know all academics lie. Don't trust a scholar. Ever. They have... They, 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 they come up with these weird theories that don't actually exist. And, and, and it's just hor it's horrible. It's just horrible how scholars are evil. Ah! They turn people into zombies, you know that? Oh. Hey! You cannot prove that I'm wrong! Um. Here's a good article. Traditional Wicca as a Spiritual Path by a Michael Straw. Um, oh, come on now. Now, you know, the, the very title tells you that the entire article is wrong. Okay? The premise is wrong. Wicca is not a spiritual path. It's, it's, a bunch of monkeys making up stuff, okay? No, how I mentioned a tradition invented last Thursday? Well, uh, a Wicca is a tradition invented last Monday, which it makes it even less valid than everything else. Don't ever trust a Wicca. Never. It's not a real religion. Don't listen to these people. Mm -hmm. You can't prove it's a real religion. No, you can't. Ah. <laughs> uh, now, here, here's actually an article I was looking forward to look at seeing once I found out was in here. Um, and I'm probably going to be vastly disappointed because <laughs> that's what happens when I get my hopes up. <laughs> Makes me cry a little. The elusive throw of the Golden Dawn. A small part of a solution. By Tony Phil. Uh, who's been basically digging through boxes of uh, paperwork. Um. Um. And as somebody who spent some time as a historian, uh, you never trust anything you find in a box, okay? Um, that's labeled, do not lose, and top secret, and and the truth, okay? Not, not, you never trust that box. And look, it has pictures. That's a disappointment, you know? Uh, it has a picture. That's a disappointment, you know? can't trust any article with a picture. Oh, really. You, you cannot trust any articles with pictures. Yeah, it's basically an outline of how the uh, troll cards looked at a certain point in Golden Dawn's development. Um, it, 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 it's an interesting article, but uh, it should not be in in a, a, a book like this because that preserves it for, you know, years and years. And this, this, this is the stuff that should have been lost, okay? That, that, that was put in that box, Mark Trof, and do not lose. But that's actually a, you, instructions to lose it forever. It's wrong that the article's printed in air. And then we have... Wow. Well, you know... You know, I knew that Nick was uh, kind of short on page count, uh, but I did not realize how short he was on page count until just now, okay? An essay on the ancient mysteries. No problem. By Wayne Westcott. Nick conjured up the dead in order to fill up the book. Wow. Uh, Nick's a necromancer. That makes him evil. <gasps> Who would have guessed that Nick's evil? I mean, outside of 
everybody, yo. So anybody actually thinks that he's not evil? No? Okay. Good! As so long as we all agree he's evil, we're doing just good. Oh. God, this goes on for several pages, too. Oh. Should have started counting pages, shouldn't I? Um, heck, Hondas, who had the biggest art at all? Um, ooh, the Shields of Hercules, the spiritual task of the ego. Um, um, okay. This is my best attempt to pronounce this name, okay? Inya Crestra Van Bergen. No. No? Oh. So I, I'm going to receive a box with a, a, a cassette tape with all, all these names pronounced for me. Is that what we're going to do? I see you. I see what you're thinking. Don't think you're invisible. Thanks to NSA technology, I know what you are thinking while you're watching this. Mm. I can't prove that I don't know that. Mm -hmm. Ooh, look, a handy chart that you can safely tear out of the book and burn. Mm. Um. Tell me you're not going to burn this book. I know there are people who are going to burn this book. In fact, you should buy up every copy you can. Buy hundreds and thousands of copies and burn them. Because it will ensure that this book is, is not ever reprinted and he doesn't produce anymore. Yes. But how you, yeah, how you put a publisher out of business. How do you put a writer out of business? You, you buy up all the copies and you burn the copies. What? You don't know if it's wrong or right. You have to test these things. So go out, buy lots of copies of this book and burn them. And, and, and make this book disappear. I really like this chart. I, I I really should not like this illustration, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh okay. Um We all know that this is just wrong, okay? Um Nick was obviously desperate so for page camp. Because we have um, a evocation of the four sons of Horus here, written by a lunatic. How do you pronounce this name? A lunatic. That's the first name. Whiff is his middle name. Soapbox is the last name. Okay? A lunatic with a soapbox. You should not read this article. Maybe you should. You now this article, you know, this ritual may actually make your head explode. <gasps> well, get that on film and and, and uh, do the ritual. And if your head explodes, yeah. Um, your, your boyfriend or girlfriend or dog friend can collect the insurance money. You know, it's an act of God. Oh. But yeah, um, a, a lunatic with a soapbox is probably the worst person in here. Um, um, then we come to uh, cavalry crosses. And their astrological influences within the Enochian Tablet Angles by Christina Salski. I'll be honest, the, the, this is actually the first thing, thing that I've actually seen, that I've seen her, you know, write. 
Um. <gasps> okay. There you go. Your obligationary, completely wrong chart. Pay no attention to. Yep. Nothing right on this chart at all. Nope. Nope. Nothing right. Nothing. Nothing's right. Don't pay any attention to this chart. It'll lead you to, uh, to uh, hell and, and drinking with women and, and wild sex parties. Well, that doesn't sound that bad. Come on, make it. <laughs> I might have to use that chart. <laughs> oh, there's another one. Right, one here. One here. Somebody had some ambition. Yep. Uh, oh, look. Helpful arrows. Uh, for those of us who, quite honestly, have studied our material while under the influence of large amounts of cat now. Um, in mead. Yeah, send me, yeah, yeah, why don't you send me some mead and I can drink it while, while, while videotaping and it'll be just awesome. Mead and bacon. Bacon! I would like some bacon with that too. Mead and bacon. No? Oh. Uh, hey! You can't fault me for trying. No. Oh. oh, wow. There is just so many of these in here. Yeah, it, it, it's just, ah, ah, uh, yeah, the, the, the wrongness of an article increases with the number of diagrams that the article contains, which is why you can't actually trust mathematicians, by the way. Um, what? Oh, would I lie to you? I could never lie to you. I mean, ah, book reviews. That's how you know this is a fine publication, is that they allow people to review books. Oh, yeah, that is totally, just totally, yeah, yeah, sure. This is a high-quality production here. Yes, book reviews. Oh, yeah, there's a sign that somebody's turning around going, I don't have enough pages for it. Oh. <laughs> Quickly, make up a book review. Pretend that you actually read a book. Because oh. we all know book reviews are, are, are made by people who have never read the book. Uh, who are paid to say exactly what they say about the book. It, it, they, they're given this great big bag of money and, 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 it, and a little card saying you're to give this book one star and, uh, and make sure everybody knows that the writer is on crack and is a secret lesbian. Yes, a man who's a secret lesbian that, that would make them a, a transvestite. No. <laughs> hey, what a comedian lying to me. Anyway, but anyway, so well, if you, you want to select your own book review, what you do is you, you send them the book and you send them a great big bag of money, okay? And the money part is important, okay? Plus, with your, your how you would like to... You know, have the book reviewed. Um, somebody forgot to send the money, okay? That, 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 this is a threat, okay? This whole video is a threat to all other writers. You want me to give you a good book review, you send the bag of money. Otherwise, I do exactly what I'm doing today. Yes. Nobody will read your book after I reveal the truth about it. Do not buy this book. Arr, arr. Mm -hmm. Obey me. Do not buy this book. This book is utter nonsense.
No? Oh. Hey, it's worth a try! My wife would like to see me receive bags of money. So, we have a review of uh, Pittermouse. Peter Mouse, that Peter Mouse is by DG Metcock. Metcock. Something, okay? Some writer with a false name who, 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 you know. And th this review is by Aaron Leach, who you can't trust. You know it because he will give a five star book, a one star book review, because he's been given a great big bag of money to give it a bad review. Yes. Yeah, that, the internet would not lie to me about this, okay? I know who's giving false reviews for money. You can't tell me they're not doing it. It's a bag of money. Nobody lies about people getting paid bags of money to give selective book reviews in exactly the way they want these reviews to go. You can prove me wrong by sending me a bag of money. Along with a note of, of review this book however you see fit. Thank you very much. Enjoy your money. Buy lots of bacon and rum rivers. your disbelief of of my opinions to be just early appalling. I, I, I don't know why. I, 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 I try to share wisdom with you if you're just going to sit there and go, oh, uh, yeah, he's lying. No, that's not what happens. No. No, nobody ever receives a bag of money for reviewing a book. I don't know why I put up with you people. <clears throat> well, they actually provide a, 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 a handy dandy link for where you can buy the book. <laughs> it's always helpful. <laughs> um, oh, then we have another review uh, Techniques of Greco Egyptian Magic, a book written by Stephen Skinner, and reviewed by Nick Farrell. So, yeah, you know, that's a quality review. Because Nick knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, um, it's a book. Um, um, I'm not sure how much it, it sells for. Um, because this is truthfully, like, like, was contained in a, a, the, the pile of crap to unpack. Um, so don't buy this book. It's full of rubbish by rubbish writers. And there's not a, a true word in the entire book. So do not buy this book. And remember, as always, if you would like me to review your stuff or... Open up a big box of crap. Oh. Send it to Mad Uncle Morgan. Attention, crap to unpack. 27, 27 Cook Street, Denver, Colorado, 80205, USA, USA, USA. And yes, I, I will open your crap on film. Upload it to the internet. Along with my truth. Because I would not lie to you. And remember, I would not lie to you. So do not buy this book. Or, or if you really want this book to disappear, buy hundreds of copies and burn them so nobody else can buy it. No? Well, you have a nice knife there. Don't eat bacon. Don't drink rum. Bye-bye.